Shabbat shalom, everybody, and you are welcome to the Sabbath of this morning. Uh, we give the Lord our God the glory and the honor for everything that He has done, is doing, and is going to do in our life. Uh, uh, this is the uh, the ending of the the book of the Sefer, the book of Vayikra, because this morning we are having two uh, 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 we are having two uh, parasha. Uh, the, the parasha of this morning are Behar and Behokotai. So, and this is the ending of the book of Vayikra, the book of Leviticus, the book of uh, the Torah Kohanim. That is what we call the book of Leviticus. So, we are ending it, and where, wherever we end any book, the, what do we say? We say, uh, we say, Hazak, Hazak, Beni, Hazak. That means be strong, be strong, and may we be, be strengthened. All right, uh, we say that the Lord God continues to strengthen us as we continue, as we progress in His book, in His word, in the word of the Torah. So the parasha of this, uh, the parasha, sorry, of this morning is Behar and Behokotai. So Behar, uh, the meaning translate as on the mountain or in the mountain, and also Behokotai is the, the decrees, the regulations, the status of the Lord. So uh, I just want to quickly, because it's, it's a double, uh, it's a it's a double uh, parasha. I just want to quickly give us, uh, I mean, what each of the parasha talks about, because I'm going to deal mainly on parasha behar this morning. So uh, uh, on behar, behar talks about the 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 rules for the sabbatical years, the shemitah and the jubilee year, the yuvel, all of the property in the land. And not lending money at interest to your fellow. That that means we cannot borrow our fellow Israelite, our fellow Hebrew people, money with interest. All right. And uh, why the book of Bekokotai, the, uh, the parasha, sorry, of Bekokotai talks about uh, the seven people say five, but I I can count seven blessings. The the seven blessings following. The rule. If we follow the rules of God, if we follow the Torah, Moshe gave us seven blessings. Why, if we disobey the rules and the regulation, if we disobey this, uh, the status of our God, then we have 30 causes to those that disobey the rules. And we also, uh, the, the, uh, the parasha of the Kokotai also talks about the law of vows, of tithes, uh, things that we promise to God, and things. That uh, needs to be redeemed, right? Things that are uh, that you, you have to redeem if you don't want to. I mean that uh, it's not good, or if, you if it is good, that if you want to redeem it uh, from uh, a bar. So those are the rules, and Parashat uh, Bikokotai uh, talks about all those all those rules. So the uh, the subtitle that I'm going to I subtitle this uh, the Parashat of this morning is is God. An environmentalist. What do I mean by that? Is God an environmentalist? It's a question. So this is what I'm talking about, and this is what the Parasha Behar talks about this morning. Parasha Behar talks about the what the the Shemitah years that the land has to work for what for six years, and seventh year the land must be free. Don't touch it, don't do anything in the land. And then it also talks about the Yovel, that you, you can take your brother as a slave for, for, for what? For 49 years. On the 50 years, you shall let him go free. You shall proclaim freedom on, uh, in, in the year. You shall proclaim freedom on the 50th year, and everybody must, must return to their ancestral heritage. So, let's see actually. Uh, what uh, the parasha, uh, which I'm going to talk about this morning, I uh, based mainly my speech this morning on parasha Behar. Parasha Behar is the permanent parasha of the book of Vayikra. The commandment details in this parasha were given to Moshe Rabbeinu either on the mountain or in his private uh, 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 tent at the at the foot. Of the mountain. The majority of the parasha Behar details the law of Shemitah, as I said, the release of the land from death in the seventh year of a seven year cycle and in the Juvel, the year of Jubilee, which is the 50th year. 
they were given to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai in order that they will observe them when they enter into the land of Israel after three days journey from leaving Mount Sinai. But things did not go to plan, do they? No, it didn't go to plan as it was planned because we commit sin and we face the consequence of our actions. Just as the Hebrew people were commanded to observe the Shabbat and cease from work, so the land, the land of Israel has to observe the Shabbat and cease from its normal routine. Remember, anything that goes at routine every day, every day, every day becomes cumbersome. It becomes un uninteresting. And God is saying, on the seventh year, every seven year, the land shall go without anybody touching it. Okay? It shall observe a Shabbat, Shabbaton, for the law. The observance of the law of, of Shemitah and Juvah, just like the observance of Shabbat, ensure the welfare, both spiritual and material, of the Hebrew people. What, what, what do I mean by this? When the land is returned back to the original owner, let's say, for example, the man, because he was poor, or he won a debt, and he couldn't pay the debt back, he used his land as a shorty, or he used his land as a what? As a guarantee. So he knows for sure that on the 50th year, the land will return back to him. Even though if the man is not alive, surely the land will return back to his what? To his descendant. So this is, is a kind of a material blessing for the people because God doesn't want any, anybody in the land of, of Israel to be without a land. So God gave us this rule. You see, it, it is a rule that we as children of God has to do what? Has to follow. Indeed, one of the reasons given by the sages for the destruction of the first temple was the non-observance of the law of Shemitah and Yuvah. As Rashi comments on verse 25, uh, chapter 25, verse 18, the 70 years of the Babylonian exile correspond to the 70 Shemitah years that the children of Israel neglected to observe the, this commandment. God gave us a commandment that when we enter into the land, this and this and this and this is what we are going to observe. And we say, yes, we are going to do it. But when we enter into the land, we change our mind. When we enter into the land, we disobey the rules. When we enter into the land, we begin to do something else. And then the punishment came. Because for 70 years, we refused to do what? To, uh, to, to, to give the land a rest. And we refused to let people to go free. We refuse, even though when we allow people to go free, we went back again and claimed them back. You know, we, we, let, we, let, we let the, the slave went, right, and we went back again and claimed them back. And this was evil in the sight of the Lord. And so, therefore, as said, he said, this is one of the main reasons why uh, God sent us into the Babylonian exile for 70 years. But what I want to talk mainly is of what is going on also in our country, in, in Canada, especially in the city of Montreal, but out in our region, okay? Because I, I want us to understand that this the Torah is a template for the children of Israel, and uh, of the people of the world, rather, to follow. God gave the children of, of Israel this template, and then by extension to the rest of the world, that we have to follow this, that if we follow this, then everything will be fine. But if we disobey, then it is to our own detrimental. Okay? So, not long ago, when I was listening to the evening news, the reporter said that the city wants to clear a forest near the city that was left for the deer, because the city needs the space for construction. When I had this, I was shocked. I said within myself, is there no other land in the city that can be given for the construction of condo than this land? You see, this deer has been living on this land for thousands of years. We human beings came and began to claim the land one by one. We begin to do construction, 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 and we are pushing the deers, pushing them, pushing them. Or not only the deers, most of the animals. We extinguish them, we destroy them because we want to get the land for what? For construction. 
the city suggested to slaughter them, to kill them, because moving them will be so dangerous. And relocating them to another forest is to them and no option, no option at all, just kill them. And the city also said that they have no money for such endeavor so that they can that, that can be wasted. So they don't want to waste no money. So the easiest way is to kill the deers. There was no way or so there was no any of the so-called animal lovers that stand up to defend the deers. Only a woman, a lawyer, that sued the city and said, no, 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 this cannot go. As I listen to the reporter and see the threat this deer face, I keep thinking. But this is God's land. It is under siege from his people. The question now is, who speaks for the land? That is the question. Remember I said, God, an environmentalist. Or is God an environmentalist? Before anybody can even think about saying that, oh, I'm an environmentalist, I want to protect the land, I want to protect the environment, I don't want any uh, uh, pollution of the uh, environment. God, in his wisdom, has given us the law to protect the environment. Who asks the land? Do you want the deer to remain here or do you want Kondo? Nobody, right? Who asks the deer? Do you want to move to another place or do you want to be slaughtered? Nobody. Was it uh, or who uh, who who, uh, who speak that uh, for the land that the land should give way for Kondo or the deers? Sorry, should give way for for Kondo. Nobody. What is the voice of tradition here? And this takes me all all the way back, 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 back. If we look at the, 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 the original inhabitants of the land, the natives, we know that the people, the natives, or, 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 the, or, the natives of the land, they do what? They, they, they revere the land. To them, the land is precious. To them, land has to be protected, has to be guided. To them, land is not just every time condo, 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 it's all about money, 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 money making. No! The land has to be has to be taken care of. But when we came in, or especially when we that we call ourselves with Western understanding, when we came in, we took the entire land and we pollute it and we destroy it. So when I read this week Parasha, I wonder if I had found that voice in verse in verses. 23 and 24. God speaks through Moshe Rabbeinu, saying to the Israelites, But the land must not be sold beyond reclaim, for the land is mine. You are but stranger resident with me. Throughout the land that you hold, you must provide for the redemption of the land. The land has to be redeemed. That is what God said unto us. And remember I said that this, that the Torah is a template that God has given to the children of Israel for the whole world to do what? To follow suit. When we use land, and we use land, and we use land, and we pollute and pollute and, and, and pollute, then will the land yield good food for us? Of course no, because we have polluted the land. Remember the Torah said, you are what you eat. Everything that we eat comes from the land. And if we pollute the land, if we destroy the land, we are not destroying the land, we are destroying ourselves. Because what the poison that we, uh, the, 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 that we say is a food, it's not a food, but actually it's a poison because you are poisoning yourself with the poison that you are poisoning the land. So God is telling us this morning, God does not eat our food. God is not a, a physical being that eats food. God is giving us a command that, that benefits us as individual and collectively as a society so that we can be healthy is a secret of long life and prosperity. That we can live long, but if we begin to eat poisoning, how can you live long? Then we come and complain that there's all this kind of cancer, there's all, all this kind of sicknesses, or that this kind of disease that is spreading everywhere. Why? Because the land is being polluted.
the context of this verse is not a, <laughs> a treaty on the environment, rather, the parasha deal with condition attached to the Israelite ownership of the land. For you to own a land, God said that you, as an Israelite, or as a Hebrew person, you have, if you buy a land from somebody on this on this on the 50th year, you have to return the land back because it is not only you, but you have to think also of your brothers. If you if one person owns the entire land, then everybody will be a slave unto that person alone. And we can see what is going on in our world now at the present day. We see the billionaires, they buy lands. Hundreds of millions of hectares they buy. They just keep it for themselves, right? Why are, are every, everyone is suffering? Looking, you see, they build high condos, right? And they put everybody like a sandine in a box. That is what I call those condos. It is concerned that no system developed in Israel that permanently removed land from God's domain. The land must be in the public trust by granting inalienable rights of ownership to any individual or groups. So we that, that the Torah is telling us that the land is what must be in the domain or in the in the hand of God. God is the owner of the land. God said, "You are what what a, a, what a stranger with me." On the land, because this is not our eternal home. This is just a a, a, pass, a passerby. Just this is just a, 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 a kind of a path it, it, that 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 will take before eternal life. So you or me, none of none of us will live eternally here on the planet. No. So God is saying that we individually and collectively has to write our voice and take care of our own environment. Take care of the land, protect the land, and make sure that the land is not polluted. God set a year of jubilee every 50 years, in which all lands will revert to their former owners, that which is a kind of a form of prosperity for the former owner who sold the land because of one reason or the other. To transfer, no transfer of property can be for a longer term. And each sale of land must be valued according to the number of years left until the Jubilee. Apparently, this system was never really implemented, and that led to the Babylonian slavery. Because we refuse, as the children of God, as the people that God has given this commandment, because we refuse to obey those rules, and this led, this disobedience led to the Babylonian slavery. Because you cannot keep your brothers in perpetual poverty. No. God is saying that your brother has the right to the land as much as you have the right to the land. It's not because you are wealthy. It's not because that you are rich that you can take all the land and put forth for yourself and your brother will be a slave for you eternally. No. And this is also a kind, to a, a kind of trick to resolve conflict. Because if there is, if tribe begin to fight among tribes, that, that, we, that we know sh shalom. And God is saying that I'm going to give you shalom. So God is telling us this morning that if a man is from the tribe of Dan and he gave his land to the, to the person from the tribe of Yehuda, right? At the 50 years, the person who bought it from the tribe of Yehuda has to return it back to the tribe of Dan. They cannot claim it, claim it as his own. No, because the land does not belong to your tribe. So, if the man from the tribe of Ephraim buy a land from the land uh, from the hand of the people of or, 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 or the Yehudim, then uh, uh, at fifty years, the man from Ephraim has to return the land back to the man who is from Judah. That is it, so that there will be no conflict. So this is, and the land cannot be sold more than that. The maximum years is forty nine years. You can use it for forty nine years in the fifty years to return it back to the original owner of the land. What stands out is the theological idea that the land belongs to God, not to us. We are just a servant. As it is said, the earth is the Lord and its fullness. Everything in the world belongs to God. That is, uh, that is Psalm 24 verse 1. And that the Israelites are resident strangers in the land. 
It is not for them eternally, for the, law, for the land belongs to God. In thinking about how this verse might apply to the future of the piece of land from the city, I connected it with verse 4 from the same chapter. But in the seventh year, the land shall have a Shabbat of complete rest, a Shabbat of the Lord. You shall not sow your land or prune your vineyard. This chapter then is not only concerned with how men own the land, it also speaks of how they treat the land. Remember I said, the native Indians, who are the original owner of this land, they call the land, in their language, Mother Earth. They, 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 they take care of it. They, to them, it's precious. It's something great that they, they, you don't make mess out of it at all. No. It's, it's a good thing. And God is telling us this morning that we, as a people, we have to take care of the land. We have to protect it. We have to guide it. This chapter then is not only concerned with how men own the land, it also speaks of how they treat it. There are historical, ecological motivations for the commandment to let the land lie fallow every seven years. In the ancient Far Eastern civilization, we, we understood that many of the land has been destroyed because of oversaturated uh, or over, over irrigation. And when you over irrigate a land, the land becomes very salty. And when the land becomes very salty, it does not yield anything. And God is saying, leave the land for one year. I remember when I was small, right? Just a short story. When I was small, my grandfather back home, they do what? Uh, 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 when they want to, to plant, right? Instead of them to, to go to the farm and clear all the grass, they don't do that. In the dry season, right? They just set a fire in the land. The, 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 the land will burn off. And so I was thinking in my head, why do they burn the land? You know, because uh, some, uh, I was thinking uh, some animal can be caught in the fire and they can die and so on and so forth. So I asked my, my grandfather, why do you burn the land? He said, to go and, and, you know, clean, you know, the land. My grandfather said, said no. He said, they burn the land because when you burn the land, the ash goes into the soil and fertilizes the soil. I didn't understand that. I was saying, oh, so this is why you burn the land. He said, fire in the land. He said, yeah, this is, how, this is why we burn the, the bush or the grass so that the grass can fertilize. They are, they are. So in their own understanding, that is what they thought. But I was saying that, oh, but that there might be some animal that might be caught in the fire and they will die. But to them, they don't think about that. What they think about is how their soil can be fertilized. But God is telling us that we have to be an environmentalist. We have to take care of the land. Because when you eat from the land, what are you eating? Are you poisoning yourself? Or when you go to the grocery to go and buy, we can see it now, right? There is no uh, Shemitah years. They pump chemical, put chemical, put chemical on the land. And when we buy all the things that we buy and eat from the grocery, so to say, it's very sad. But so to say, it is all chemicalized. And they will come and come and they will come and, uh, and, and be crying that there is this disease that is too much or there is this that disease when we refuse to follow the Torah. If we follow exactly what God has promised in the Torah, there will be no all these problems. Because God in his wisdom has given us the template to follow. But more importantly, the land here is seen not only as the vehicle for the enrichment of man, as so many people thought, its own Shabbat, its own holiness, its own rhythm are recognized as inheritance. The land is part of God's plan for the holiness of his people. It is one of the equations that balance the life of the Israelite people in the land. That we as an Israelite, we as a Hebrew people, has to do what do exactly what God has, has commanded. It's even though in the, in the land of Israel, <clears throat> inside that those big corporations, they don't even follow the, 
this matter yet. No. Maybe small, small farmers, they do that, but not those big corporations. Because to them, it's all about money. It's all about enrichment. And God is saying, you, you don't have to see things that way. It's not about enriching myself. I want to enrich myself through the land. Why the land suffer? As such, this parasha represent a vision of sustainable development. The city government will do well to remember God's word. The land is mine, says God. You are both stranger resident with me. Remember, I said, yeah, but I said oh, that Canada is not uh, Canada is not the people, the people of Israel. Yeah, I understand that. But remember, as I said, that the Torah is given to the people of Israel as a template for the rest of the world. The city must develop alternative plans that save the land for the deer and while also providing housing somewhere else for the people. There must be a balance. We can't just come and kick the deers out and kill them and wipe them out and use that land to build condo. It doesn't make sense. The, la the, the deers have been living there for thousands of years. We are the one who is disturbing them. It is not the deer that come and disturb us. We are the ones, as a human being, that is kicking them out, that is killing them, that is destroying them. And then all the old land is being occupied by man. We have to find a balance. The deer should be left alone. And even though if the wars come to wars, they can be transferred from that place to another place. But the city said no, that it is dangerous. They don't want to transfer them, they have to kill them. But some 100 years ago, some 150 years ago, the European brought cow from Europe and bring them down here and they survived. They brought deers from here, uh, from Europe, down, down here and they survived. How come are you saying that this deer cannot survive in, 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 in another place? It doesn't make sense. Even though the woman, the lawyer that, that stood for and said this cannot be, said, let us transfer them. To another place, and they say, No, they cannot survive, they're going to die. How do you know? Why don't you try it first? Try that and see. But no, we just want to do what to kill them. The province desperately need a plan that preserve the open spaces that are currently disappearing at a rapid pace to developers that are being outgrown by condo like 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 Mushroom. The government must also consider these animals as they also have the right to the land as much as we do. The, the, the deers have the right to that, to that space as much as we do too. But we have to balance things up. There are other land, there are, there are other places that we can uh, give to the developer if they want to develop. Let them go and develop there. They say no, 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 because it is far away from the city. Because the land where the deers are is in, is in the city, so, so therefore it takes a lot of money. It's all about enrichment, it's all about greed. So to me, as a rabbi, I would say that the city has to reconsider. They have to leave the deer alone into their space and they can locate or find another place for condo development. I know human beings within home, we need houses, yes it is good, but they can find another place for them, even though if the worst come to worst, and they said they need that particular land, then let the deer be transferred to another land instead of killing them for no for no for no reason. So God is God, an environmentalist. Yes, God is an environmentalist, and God has taught us because He is the, he is the creator of all things. He has taught us on how to take care of ourselves and take care of the land. If we take care of, of the land, I bet you. A lot, a lot, a lot of problems will be solved as if you follow the template of the Torah that God has given to our forefathers, you know, that we, if we follow it, we will prosper. But if we disobey it, then we're going to face the consequence of our action. Parashat, Bihar, and Bikukutai is God an environmentalist. Shabbat Shalom.